What's going on PC fans, Jay's Two Cents here and we just finished up Tech Talk and now we are gonna take a look at a product here that technically it's not PC hardware, but that's not all I do around here anyway. You could though use it on your PC if you wanted, but today we are looking at the Simple Audio Listen Stereo Speakers and these, they've got a heck of a price tag that goes along with them, so there's something you would definitely want a price drop or a little bit of a, 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 a where are my words? Today's video is sponsored by MassDrop, the largest community commerce platform in the world. Head to MassDrop today and suggest something to be dropped. Not like literally dropped, but you know, where they bring the price down and stuff. If you guys aren't a member of MassDrop, it's absolutely free. It's definitely worth taking a look at. In fact, you'd be surprised how many people were actually signed up on MassDrop because basically what it is, it is like bulk discounts where MassDrop will go and negotiate uh, group rates for cheaper pricing on products that users like you vote on that they want to go and get a cheaper price. So if enough people said, hey, we want this motherboard and we want it cheaper, they'll go and negotiate it and then they'll come up with a group rate. So it's really like a win-win. Now we'll go ahead and just kind of take a tour around the box. There it is. We have gone around the box. You guys know me, I don't care a whole lot for the unboxings. So yeah, whatever. Packaging is kind of neat on this though. It's got a sleeve with NVIDIA green. And there they are. All right, so first thing I've noticed is they're actually pretty heavy. And there's a cord that just fell out on me there. And accessories and a remote control. That's pretty cool. Okay, so before we talk about the accessories that come with it, I just wanna point out that these are very, very sturdy made. You've got a nice fabric grill on here, kind of a mesh grill, but it is fabric, not metal. But you do have what appears to be aluminum or aluminum, depending on the part of the country that you are in. And the top uh, is a very polished plastic, and that's because all of the controls on this thing are handled through capacitive touch. So we'll talk about that a little bit in the future. You have a headphone port as well as a uh, three and a half millimeter input jack. So you could hook this up to an iPod or an MP3 player or something that uh, maybe didn't have Bluetooth. So you could input sound into this thing. And then you have a subwoofer uh, preamp on here, which is important too, because to get nice full sound, you would want a subwoofer. So it does have expandability for that. And then you have your speaker out port on there, which, wow, <clears throat> I almost whacked myself somewhere I didn't want to. So you can plug in the left speaker right there, but let's say you're in a situation kind of like I am with the computer behind me here, where you want to separate the speakers out a bit more. You can take this extension cable, plug it into the speaker cable, and then you get a really wide uh, capability of separating these speakers out for wider sound stage, uh, if that's what you want. Now you also have a USB, a micro USB port on here so that you can hook this up to a computer and it becomes its own sound device. And then you have on here your power port or power plug. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much all the buttons that are on there when it comes to physical buttons. In the package here, I'm assuming this is pretty much just gonna be our USB cable and probably the power brick because this thing does require power. And uh, I was right, what do you know? Oh, and it comes with a three and a half millimeter male to male plug so that you could use it plug it into your phone or whatever. Now it does have your quick start guide, so you'd want to consult that for doing things like Bluetooth pairing, and uh, here is your remote control. You pull that out, and now the battery is active, so this thing will work. Uh, so what I want to do right now, uh, and by the way, this is a three meter extension cable, so you can see you've got an extra, what, nine feet of length on there, which is good. So we got the speaker grill off right here, and you can see it is just a nice fabric. And then you can see that it is basically a two-way speaker system where you've got your main woofer driver there and a silk dome tweeter. Now, if you remove the back, there's something else built into these speakers. And that's what makes these start to get a little bit into the audiophile range. It's one of those terms I really hate to use, but for the price of this, you know, the technology should be in there. You have here, uh, basically it's like a dampening cone, but it is gonna help the sound a little bit, especially when it comes to the bass by having uh, this cone on the back. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged this thing into power, and you can see on the top here, um, it is capacitive touch. You got your power button. One of the things I hate, hate, hate about polished finishes is it attracts, attracts dust and fingerprints, so I do really hate that this is a polished finish on top. Uh, but the line input button did illuminate on here since it can tell that we have something plugged into it. So I went ahead and turned on the computer. We'll use it as PC sound, but first I want to go ahead and do something here on the uh, the old iPhone and we'll see how it sounds. So 
I can't really play much on here because I don't have any music that I'm actually allowed to play, but that's not going to stop us. Okay, uh, so I didn't actually play it so that you guys could hear it for very long because I don't have royalties to listen to this music, but I do want to say that it's a bit louder than I thought it would be. There's a bit more bass than I thought it would be, but it's not incredibly loud. That could be because I'm just using it on a device like this, but although it does have its own amp built in, it shouldn't matter what the input volume is. So they're not quite as loud as I thought that they would be, but of course just plugging it in was extremely simple. Uh, Bluetooth would be just as easy where you're gonna pair it you know, like you would any other Bluetooth device. But what I think I'm a little bit more interested in with these is how well these work as PC speakers. Now I find myself in the position where I have my, uh, my Logitech Z series speakers on there, but I don't like having to constantly reach for it to turn it up and down. I am lazy and do like the idea of a remote control, but also a speaker system that I can switch inputs and do more than just PC sound on, which is unfortunately what you get with PC speakers. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the USB cable, and then we're gonna see how well this, these actually work as, as some PC speakers. So I guess it's time to, to roll that, that transition there. Especially since I can't get the stupid twist tie off. I can build a hell of a computer, but I can't operate a twist tie. Transition. Now the first thing I want to point out is the second I plugged in the USB cable, it automatically detected it, installed. Well, it didn't even install. It doesn't even require a driver. It's a plug and play. And it did go immediately to that as the sound source. So let's go ahead and see. Probably help if I turn them on. Or I turned it off. What am I doing wrong here? Unplug the three and a half cable? Let's see. Uh, what's happening? That was weird. It like clicked off and didn't come back, but I think I was doing something wrong. Look at that. Computer speakers. All right, so let's put these theoretically in the position they would be for computer speakers, sort of, kind of. And I don't know, let's see how well this, uh, this works out here. If these actually work out well, then I'm gonna use them as computer speakers. I'm really starting to hate this. It'd be as good as advertised. So if anything, we'll just go ahead and use the test bench here and we'll do some live benchmarking. And we'll just show you guys how it's really a bunch of crap. And let the buyer mount it in a standard 120 millimeter fan slot in their case, just like the 295X. All right, so I spent the last couple of minutes listening to these. Uh, in like my videos and as well as some other music and such and I have to say they don't have very crisp highs considering they have a silk dome tweeter uh, but they do sound a bit more like uh, monitors to me they where they have more what would be kind of like IPS panels for for monitors they sound more like IPS speakers to put that into a term you would understand I guess if you weren't into audio they do sound more like monitors where they would be more accurate to real life but there's not a lot, there's no EQ option. I, I can't even control bass or treble built into them. They have their own setting and that's it. And I think that's, that takes a little bit of getting used to in terms of sound. I think and on top of that, it's silent and it's awesome. Like explosions or like a little fractal ad. Okay, Jay, so what exactly is a GeForce GTX 980 hybrid? Well, as I said, and we saw- I'm just noticing that I have to turn it up way high to get volume out of it. So I'm not entirely sure how well these work as, as standalone PC speakers. I'll probably leave them hooked up on this machine for a while and just kind of try them out and see. Really all you're gaining with these is the Bluetooth capability and capacitive touch and a remote control uh, that I, I personally don't know how much I would use. So in terms of these being PC speakers, I think the, the jury's still out. Seems to have plenty of blades. Very little gap, seems like it's very decent. They don't sound terrible at all. It's just they don't, they don't sound full because these little three inch drivers are not able to give very much bass. Uh, I do have a 10 inch subwoofer that I could hook up to these. I'm not doing that for this video, uh, but I do think with a subwoofer then it might sound more full. I wish the highs were a little more crisp and clear, but they're not. It has a much more flat uh, sound signature or sound stage to these. So uh, I don't know, the jury's still out on these, but Tell me what you guys think. Have you guys looked into this brand before? Do you know anything about Simple Audio? They come off to me as a little bit like a brand that's trying to be a bit more of a boutique brand, uh, audiophile grade, but compared to other speakers in the same range, like the Bose Companion 5s, I've heard those. Those are on my, my father's computer actually, and those are 299 bucks, and they sound phenomenal. 
They sound a lot better than these, but again, they don't have remote control. They don't have uh, the Bluetooth capability where you can hook up, you know, a phone or something to it and have it do dual purpose. So I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where these fit in. You guys tell me. Uh, of course, Masterop doesn't really care a whole lot about whether or not you guys like the product because Masterop is independent from the product themselves. So obviously be brutally honest, but I'm gonna leave these hooked up as a PC uh, speakers here for a little bit and we'll see how it goes. But other than that, guys, tell me what you think. Follow on social media if you guys have any questions. And of course, thank you guys for using the Amazon affiliate link down in the descriptions. I can't believe we have sold 800 items in a month. That's crazy. You guys absolutely blow my mind with that. So anyway, keep being awesome, guys. And as always, thanks for watching. Actual gaming headset. So today we're gonna to take a look at what is probably regarded as one of the most favorited headsets on the market, the HyperX Cloud. But what's cool about this is this is the Cloud 2. It's the predecessor to the famous HyperX Cloud, and they have put some pretty cool features into this thing, and I'm pretty excited about it.